So again, welcome to the Svasemis, the Kilos Chaverim. And uh, the subject of the Meraglim, the key subject in Parsha Shlach, even though there are other subjects that follow, and Mepharshim explain how and why they're connected. But the Svasemis really goes on at length in a few places about the nature of Eretz Yisrael and the nature of Am Yisrael's relationship with Eretz Yisrael, which is key to understanding the Meraglim, meaning Kula Manoshim, I, they emphasized these were very great people, spiritual giants, and yet somehow they saw, but they didn't see it in the right way. There was something missing there. And what and how, and therefore how are people less than them supposed to succeed if they failed? What and how is supposed to be done? So the Posuk of Yoshua and Kalev, who were the opposition, the minority party, Right, it said Tova Oretz Maod Maod. Right, the Oretz is very, very good. Okay, and he'll speak about that double language. Im Chafetz Banu Hashem veEvio Sano LaOretz Hazos in the Sano Lanu. If Hashem desires us, wants us, He will bring us to this land and give it to us, the land which is Zavas Cholav Udvash, flowing with milk and honey. So the Svasem says. Ki be'emes Eretz Yisrael muchan rak livnei Yisrael. Meaning, what Kolev and Yoshua were saying was, this is not a maybe. This is a match that must be. Eretz Yisrael is meant for Am Yisrael. Am Yisrael are meant for Eretz Yisrael. There's a medrash about someone who had male servants and female servants, and he was marrying them off to people from different countries, and he said, wait a second, why am I doing it that? Why don't I have my male servants marry my female servants? So too, right, all these different nations with Eretz Yisrael, Am Yisrael should be in Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael should be with Am Yisrael. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, yeah, they uh, end up. So now he tells us, right, he, right, he, he tells us it's also like a, a garment. Eretz Yisrael, no Allahem vehem no im lo. Eretz Yisrael is befitting. Noah is not just beautiful. Noah means like fitting. It's a fit. But the relationship goes two ways. And this is where it gets eye-opening. He says, Ki b'nei Yisrael nitkanu al yedei ha'aretz, ve'eretz Yisrael nitkan al yedei b'nei Yisrael. And this, uh, yesterday actually was at a little, you heard Rabbi Feldman also, I think he was quoting the Maharal, the Talmud Chacham named Rabbi Arya Feldman, and uh, that the concept of bris is when two people join together, or two entities join together, and they each give to the other, creating much more than the sum of the two. So Eretz Yisrael is something of a bris. V'charesim of bris, the says learns Eretz Canaan, right? That, uh, this idea of the covenant. So that means it's going to go two ways. We often don't think of it that way. We think that Eretz Yisrael is this holy land, and we think if Am Yisrael is worthy enough, they can come into the Holy Land and they will benefit from the holiness of the Holy Land. But he says, it's true. Am Yisrael do get a tikkun from the land, but the land gets a tikkun from them and it goes back and forth. Now, just today I found there's a safer collection of sayings of the Rizhner, the first Rizhner of Yisrael of Rizhn, and uh, it's called Irin Kadishim. And there he gave the mushal, he said that Eretz Yisrael is like a blanket. Okay, if he says, if a man goes into a bed and covers himself with the blanket, the blanket warms him and he warms the blanket, right? And so it goes. But that's on condition that the man is alive. If the man is dead, ain't nothing going to happen. Man's cold, blanket stays cold. Right? In another version, he spoke about a rock or something. In other words, it has to have, Eretz Yisrael has to be activated. And it has to go two ways in terms of that. Um, they tell a story there that a man had traveled to Eretz Yisrael and came back and he said, no, what did you see? What did you think of Eretz Yisrael? And the guy gave one of these comments, kind of like, eh, you know, not much to see. So the originator said, let me tell you a story. He said, there was once a man who had a string of daughters and each daughter married a Talmud Chacham. When his last daughter was dating, there were no Talmud Chachamim around. So she got married to an ignoramus. As the wedding was approaching, he sees she's not getting her wedding dress ready. 
right? He, he says, what, what's happening? She says, my sister is married to Amir Chachamim, so they adorned themselves and displayed their beauty. She says, I'm marrying an ignoramus. I don't show myself. I don't you know, he says, that's why you didn't see the beauty of Eretz Yisrael. He says, if a per, the right person comes, Eretz Yisrael shows her beauty. If not, not. So it's this mix which has to be there. He says, just like, really, in all places in the world, right? we find Chazal say, Tzadik ba'ir hu hoda ziva, right? like it says, Yaakov Avinu leaving, that when the Tzadik is in the town, he is the glory of the town, he's the globe, but it's not just the fact that he's there, and then when he goes, it's gone. He brings out the Kedusha that is in that place, like we spoke about last week in Baloscha, with the image of lighting. There's Kedusha everywhere. The right person can bring out that Kedusha. So he interacts with the Kedusha in that place while he's there, but when he leaves, so that is what leaves as well. B'nai Yisrael, he says, are always connected to Eretz Yisrael. That's why it says, V'amech kulam tzadikim la'olam yishu aretz. Because Am Yisrael always have the connection to the source. Their source and the source of the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael are the same. Even if it's hidden, they are the kalim, he says, the hotzi minapol or agonus besocha. That is the only tool, that is the only item that can awaken the Kedusha, which is in Eretz Yisrael, and bring it out and, so to speak, activate it and actualize it. Now, so Sam is in another place, they bring in the footnotes here from Parshas Kedoshim, says that when Am Yisrael was under the Kananim, so it was, it was covered up. It was like a gift that was wrapped up. When Am Yisrael conquered it from the Kananim, he says, Nishape chacharkach v'nasa eretz chadosha. It became a new place. It became a different place. First it was called Eretz Kanaan, now it's called Eretz Yisrael. Just like we say Am Yisrael give the Kedusha to the Moadim, to the Yomim Tovim, that's why we say the Brocha Mekadish Yisrael Vazmanim, because Beisdin sets the time of Rosh Chodesh that determines the Yom Tov, so too he says they're Mekadish, the place of Eretz Yisrael. Okay, it becomes that place through Am Yisrael. And Am Yisrael, he says, are called, therefore, Ashri Yoshve Besecho, the people who dwell in your house. Because there were other people who lived in Eretz Yisrael and lived in there quite successfully. He brings from the Gemara and Shabbos that Bnei Seir HaChori Yoshve HaOretz. They were described in Parshas Bereshis from the nation of Seir, who were Yoshve HaOretz. They dwelled in the land. And they say that they were masters of the land. Right? They said that they knew how to taste the earth, to smell the earth, to know exactly where to plant, what type of crop, and how. He said, but that was only with the externals of Eretz Yisrael. They weren't interacting at all with the inner Eretz Yisrael. They were dealing with Eretz Canaan. But Am Yisrael, who are these Yoshrei Beisecha, so to speak, they were able to enter inside of it. Now, Eretz Yisrael was always a place of potential. The Svarno points out that Terach was traveling already to Eretz Canaan before Hashem spoke to Avram and said, Lech Lecha. He says, because it was known that that was a place for someone who wanted to think. There was, there was something there, some potential which was there. But it remained locked up. He says, Bnei Yisrael tzrichim l'Eretz Yisrael, v'Eretz Yisrael tzricha l'Bnei Yisrael. Right? And only when Am Yisrael came to Eretz Yisrael did it achieve its form. Because what is it that the Jewish people do? We're the connection. Meaning there's an Eretz Yisrael lamata and an Eretz Yisrael lamala. Okay? There's a spiritual form of existence called Eretz Yisrael. And the Eretz Yisrael down here parallels that. Just like we say, it's a Beis Amigdash Shomala, Beis Amigdash Shomata. Am Yisrael are the only people who have the ability to connect, right? To connect those two aspects together. And then suddenly, Eretz Yisrael wakes up in that way, and the Eretz Yisrael in this world connects to above. 
He says it's in the same way that with Shabbos. When Am Yisrael keeps Shabbos, the Neshama Yaseira, this extra spirituality, comes into the world. And he says both of these things are an edus about Am Yisrael. They show who we are, right? Meaning, I, if you imagine the old King Arthur story, whomsoever shall pull the sword from the stone that's supposed to show, this is the king of England, okay? Whomsoever can awaken the Kedusha in Eretz Yisrael, can awaken the Kedusha in Shabbos, is the nation that's meant for Eretz Yisrael. So that's what happened, he says. When Am Yisrael came into Eretz Yisrael, it became new, and the Kedusha was expressed. Now he says an interesting thing. He says, Kasher ata bavonosenu yotza kedusha meretz Yisrael, valze onu misononim. He says the kedusha left Eretz Yisrael. Now again, in terms of leaving, what it means is that it contracted, right? He speaks about the Chazal that call explained that Eretz Yisrael is called Eretz Hatzvi. It's like a deer, because the deer skin, if you skin a deer, it shrinks up. It looks very small when it's on the deer. It's very big. Okay, so Eretz Yisrael as well. When Am Yisrael are there and the Kedusha is activated, it's expressed. But when not, not. So there's, it's a land of Kedusha. And it's a land in which those things are hidden. It's hidden gems. So the Miraglim were not able to unlock it. Why was that? So he says in... Tofresh Lamed Zion, he says, Hashem promised Eretz Yisrael to the Avos. Okay, let's remember that also. There's something set in stone, so to speak, before they even got there. He promised the Avos that he would give this land to their children. So, um, in, and even the Medrash says, right, it Moshel Amelch Shiftiach Lo Avo Matana, a king promised a gift to his friend, Mesa Avo, that friend died, knows not even know. He gives it to his son. He may not have that same relationship with his son, but that's where it goes. Now, he says, Hashem, he says, the, nimsh, the Moshal and Nimshal aren't even that exact because Hashem explicitly promised to Am Yisrael that he would give Eretz Yisrael to their children, to their descendants. So, he says, the explanation is that the Avos they achieved Eretz Yisrael through merit, through their deeds. Good evening, Ms. Mendelssohn. Mendelwitz, I'm sorry. Um, and they were, they were truly worthy of receiving Eretz Yisrael. Okay? But, he says, Am Yisrael, when they originally left Eretz Mitzrayim, and they received the Torah, they were also worthy to receive Eretz Yisrael by merit. It was truly theirs. They had developed themselves into the people for it. But Cheta Egel already changed things. So does that mean they just can't go into Eretz Yisrael? No. Hashem wanted to bring them in because of the Havtocha to the Avos. He says, it's true. You are not the people anymore who can enter Eretz Yisrael in that way. And it would have been a very different type of life in Eretz Yisrael. This is why the Miraglim came and they looked at Eretz Yisrael and they said, this is not for us. This is not for us. And they were right in a certain way. He says, <laughs> They really weren't on the spiritual level that would enable them to truly enter Eretz Yisrael on their own merit. It was still under the rule of Canaan. And they weren't able to see how they would be able to transform it from Eretz Canaan into Eretz Yisrael. But these were only hastaros, what's called. These were only barriers. But if HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to bring them in, so then you simply have to go with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Okay, he says he wanted us to do it. And this was a test for them. He said, if they would have been mischazik be'amunah, then they would have gone in an entirely different way. So here we find that a bit of hope, meaning he described that Eretz Yisrael needs Am Yisrael to awaken the Kedusha, and then we can benefit from the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael that it gives to us. But if the Miraglim weren't able to do it, and if we're on such a low level, 
But here he says, no. There's a promise to the Ovos. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu can bring you into Eretz Yisrael and connect you to Eretz Yisrael, even if it doesn't seem like it makes sense. Even if, like it seems that it may not be ready. Okay, so this is what they had to do. And what they were missing, again, the Marsha brings this, others, was Anova, humility. Okay, the, the Yetzirah for great people, right, when they talk about when I was a kid, I never understood that. Right? That means if I want to do something bad, so the God of really wants to do it even more than I do, it just didn't make sense. The idea is that it's a subtler, more difficult to define even Yetzirah, more difficult to fight. And for such people often, it's the one of Gaiva, which in this case is from a very spiritual place. They wanted to be the people who could enter Eretz Yisrael on their merit and do everything that was supposed to be done there. But the answer is it's not about them. The Medrash talks about the um, Meraglim who were sent later who did it right. Yoshua sent two spies to Eretz Yisrael. Chazal say this was Kalev and Pinchas. And it says that they went Cheresh. Okay, now... Chazal say that they, they was describing their cover story when they went undercover. They were selling clay pots. Okay, they were going around there to sell who wants to buy some clay pots. And meanwhile, they were scoping out the country. So Asemis brings another explanation that has to do with not hearing. We'll get to that maybe in a bit. So the Ismach Yisrael of Alexander uh, is a, a member, so to speak, of the same cheder from Kotsk. He says that, why pottery? In other words, if it doesn't mean anything, why would Chazal tell us? If they told us, what does it mean? So clay cheres, clay pots are very unique in halacha. A clay pot is only able to become tome inside, but not from the outside. If something falls into it, which is tome, it can become tome. If something tome touches it from the outside, it doesn't. Every other keli, Kaylee from silver or iron or anything else, if the tuma touches it on the outside, it becomes tummy as well. So the reason is because, and people who've gone on archaeological digs know this, that clay pots were basically valueless. They're made out of dirt. And they were kind of the disposables of the world at that time. That's why when you're going in archaeological digs, you find broken pieces of clay pots everywhere. It's not very exciting to find a broken piece of a clay pot. We also find in Chazal that a clay pot, the re- part of the reason it was disposable is because you couldn't really clean it properly. Right? In the Hilchus Hanukkah it says that if you have an unglazed clay menorah, so you can only use it one night because the oil soaks in and it gets not good and there's nothing you can do about it. So therefore, its outside has no significance other than that it's able to contain something. So he said, that's what Chazal mean when it says Hashem loves nothing better than a shliach mitzvah that's Moser Nefesh on his shlichus. And gives the example of those two shluchim. To be Moser Nefesh, the word Nefesh means my desire. Avram said to Bnei Ches, Im yeshes nafshechem, right? If you want, right, please, you know, let me have this stay amachpelo to marry my wife. So Rashi says, nafshechem means ritzonchem. Your desire. Okay? Nefesh means desire. That's why when people are Moser Nefesh, it doesn't just mean giving up your life in the physical sense. It means when you want something very badly and you give that up for the cause. Or you're even Moser, your Nefesh. In the case of these Miraglim, they told Hashem, we are going simply as Yoshua sent us, as you want Yoshua to do. We are containers for the mission. A shliach is really only filled with the power of the one who sends him. That's why malachim are also called shlichim. A malach is something that exists only for its mission. Its name is related to its mission because that's its only existence in the world. This he just gives a beautiful explanation of a chazal. Chazal say that im harav domel malach Hashem tzvokos says if the rav resembles a malach of Hashem, so then bakesh Torah mipihu. Seek out Torah from his mouth. But if not, not. 
So what does that mean? Uh, how many people find the Rav? Uh, I don't even know what a Malach looks like to be able to check out if the Rav looks like a Malach. So uh, how would I know? He says, if it means that the Rav simply views himself as a container for Hashem's Torah that wants to give it to others, that it's not about him and it's not about his ego, then Bakesh Torah Mipiu, then that Torah can influence other people very much. He says, otherwise, if the me of the Rav gets in the way, it can't do that much. Talmud Rebbe tells a cute story from back in the, the court of his great-great-grandfather, the Reb David Talmud, the first Talmud Rebbe. So it was a very big Hasidus at that time in the Ukraine, and there were many villages around Talmud, which had Talmud Hasidim, and there were Abonim in these different villages. So it used to be that Shavuos was known as the Yontav where the Rabbonim would come to Talmud. Right? It's not such a hard Yontav to leave your congregation for. And some of the Rabbonim were Talmud Hasidim, but some of them were not. But they went anyway because since the Talmud Rebbe really was kind of in charge of that whole area, they had to kind of show up. So one such Rav came in, and the Talmud Rebbe, Rav David Mitalna saw him, and he said, how did, you, how did you leave your people without a Rav? Right? How, did, how did you go away and leave your people without a rav? And the rabbi was a little bit indignant. He says, it's like Rabbi so-and-so is here, who happened to be a Talna Chassid. He also came for Shavuos right, and left his people. He said, no, he left the rav back in his town. You brought the rav with you. Meaning, right, that sense of identity of I am the rav, Right? when he, the first one came to be with his rabbi for Shavuos, that was all tossed away. He came as a chassid among chassidim. You came here with the Rav, right? And uh, this was, uh, the current Talner Rebbe once told that story to the Ger Rebbe, the Beis Yisrael, and he said, that's your grandfather. He says, when he comes to Ger, he leaves his Rebbe outside. You know, this is uh, something, so that's the idea of a true shliach, a person who is this vessel to send and to give. If they would have had that sense of selflessness, Right, that it's not about me, so then they would have been able to succeed in their shlichus. Different Swarm connect what they said, Tova Ha'aretz Ma'od Ma'od. We mentioned that double Lashon, which the Swasemis talks about the idea of you have to go in very deep in order to connect to the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael. But also, I think it was the Chosim Yulvlin said, it connects to what it says in Pirkei Ovas, Ma'od Ma'od Heve Shval Ruach. Be very, very humble. Only a person who has the very, very humble is able to access the tova ha'aretz ma'od mode, right? To be able to do and to sense that. So now where does that leave us? The Miraglim weren't able to do it. Am Yisrael eventually came in. And if they weren't, didn't have the merit to do it, so what are they supposed to do? So here he says, this is the power of mitzvah satulius ba'aretz and especially the mitzvah of challah, which is given at the end of the parsha, Meaning that the Torah enables us to do more than what I have in my power in terms of me. He references this idea, I quote it often from the Avnei Nezer, uh, the Shem Yishmuel brings it a lot from his father, the Avnei Nezer, that we are all shluche mitzvah. The reason we're able to accomplish so much with our mitzvahs is because HaKadosh Baruch Hu made us shlichim. That's what we express when we say, Asher kideshonu b'mitzvosa v'tzivonu. So, even if you are not on the level to be that perfect match for Eretz Yisrael right now, there are things you do in Eretz Yisrael which activate it and enable you to connect to that Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael. It changes as you do it. The Swasema says that we make a mistake sometime when we think about mitzvah satulius ba'aretz, and sometimes when people come to Eretz Yisrael, they just think that they're, you know, a pain in the neck, basically. You know, it used to be, at least, you go to somebody's house, oh, I'll just have some fruit. Something else, <laughs> fruit? Oh, no, right? I don't know why the truma, mice, or the, you know, all these things are there. But he says, we'll take, let's say, we'll separate the trumas and mice from fruit, and then we'll say what's left is chulin, right? Poorly translated in English as profane or regular or something. He says it's not true. He says these are the fruits that the mitzvahs of Tzuluyus Ba'aretz were applied to. 
And that makes them special, that awakens the Kedusha in them and enables us to connect to that Kedusha. Okay, so our ability to follow the Torah and to live in Eretz Yisrael in that way enables us to accomplish much more. Okay, but we have to realize that it's not smooth sailing. Just as when Yeshua went in, it had to be done with war and it had to be done with fighting, everything which has great positive spiritual potential also has great negative. They say that the Imre Emes, the Ger Rebbe, when he was escaped through the Nazis and he was coming to Eretz Yisrael with two of his sons, his much older son, the, the Beis Yisrael, and his youngest son is Ben Zakuni in the Pnei Menachem, he said, you may have thought you had big battles with the Sahara and Chutzarts. He said, but we're going to his home office. <laughs> Meaning, this is, uh, this is the place. That's why it says that they, there are these interesting Haggadahs about the entranceways to Gan Eden are in Eretz Yisrael, the entranceways to Gehinnom are in Eretz Yisrael. It's something of great power which is there. But we have to understand that it's always ours. And every time a Jew comes to Eretz Yisrael, something does awaken. That is what we see. Something awakens in the land and something awakens in the Jew. And it takes time to see it sometime, it takes time to feel it, but it's something which is there. And uh, this just helps us. I want to finish with a beautiful explanation of that first Rashi in the Torah that seems so confusing. Rashi says, why do we start with Bereshis? Why don't we go to the first mitzvah of Achodesh HaZelachem? Right? Because if the nations of the world come and they say, Listimatem, you people are robbers, you stole Eretz Yisrael from its inhabitants, so we'll point to Bereshis and we'll say, well, guess what? HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the whole thing. And he gives it to who he wants and he takes it from who he wants. So it's very hard to understand that. First of all, conquest by war is recognized in the world. Right? Uh, yeah, virtually all the nations we've lived in or come from were conquered from somebody else. And you don't find the world saying to everybody, Listimatem, everybody's got to leave their countries right? because of that. The Americans have to leave California, right? these ones have to leave that. It's, uh, I'm not saying it was always nice and it was done well, but that's simply a reality. So I saw Rabbi Vom Shur in his Sefer, he brought down that they're not saying that you, know, you stole that piece of land from people. And why is it suddenly everybody in the world is so concerned about that piece of land? It's because that piece of land, as we said, is the signal, it's the sign of the people who are going to lead the world to its destiny. Until the Jewish people came into that land, so it was not clear who, what, or how was going to be doing that. And every nation in the world perhaps felt that they may have had that power. When it came here, it became clear that Am Yisrael were now going to lead the world to its destiny and that the other nations of the world would have to follow them. And that's what the anger and the jealousy and the constant focus of Am Yisrael being in Eretz Yisrael is, is about. So it's a very big thing. It's uh, something which, you know, the connection to Eretz Yisrael depends a lot on Rotson, on how a person feels. People sometimes who are further away from Eretz Yisrael connect to it more than a person who's actually there, right? It's something that a person has to see and to work on and to do. But first of all, the picture, the understanding of the two-way relationship. Okay, we, we don't have things that simply do stuff to us. Right, and that's why a person thinks, came to Eretz Yisrael, didn't do anything to me. What did you do to Eretz Yisrael? Right, you have to be with Takein it, it has to be with Takein you. You have to warm the blanket, the blanket warms you. That's a very key understanding of what we're doing in Eretz Yisrael. And to recognize that the big midah that Am Yisrael needs to access Eretz Yisrael properly is Anova, is the humility, is the sense of shlichus, the sense that we're messengers of something much bigger than we are, and that it's not about us or me or, you know, my ego. And then hopefully, by living and doing the mitzvahs that Hashem gave us to unlock the kedusha of the land, we'll be able to bring it to its full potential. Bimheru v'yameinu.